welcome to the session greeting of the day in today's class we are going to talk about the various applications of ndt techniques in various sectors in previous lecture we have seen about the ndt users how they are using this ndt methods in railway sections in continuous with that we are going to see about the application of ndt in pressure vessels such as nuclear or non nuclear or chemical plants so uh, importantly the pressure vessels we are going to concentrate we know in general we are using uh, importantly the main top eight entity methods such as visual liquid penetrant magnetic particles eddy current radiography ultrasonic acoustic emissions and infrared thermography all these techniques are used in maybe in the railways maybe in the aerospace maybe in the uh, production sectors maybe in this uh, boiler plants and everywhere uh, uh, related to manufacturing all components are subjected to inspections to do for surface and subsurface defect findings so now we will go for the understanding of applications of this ndt techniques in nuclear non nuclear and chemical industries importantly this preservations welding is a major manufacturing process we have started itself we are talking about welding welding is a major manufacturing process for various equipments and assemblies in nuclear non nuclear and chemical industries maybe the equipment and also separate equipment and then it become assemblies we know this the major equipments and assemblies fabricated by weldings are maybe the pressure vessels boilers heat exchangers storage tanks and industrial transmission pipings so all these things are related to our nuclear non nuclear chemical industries so we have to see in pressure vessels where are they uh, we have to do this ndt technique wherever the weld joints are there everywhere we have to do radiography or liquid penetrant to find the discontinuity this is generally we know these things so one by one also we will see here the internally accepted codes and standards followed in the fabrication of these components are so few i have given even these uh, uh, this parts are manufactured with respect to standards following certain procedure this is how it should do due to the lethargicness of the labor due to the lethargics of the engineer due to the lethargics of the designer the specifications may be changed the codes may not be followed so at this time the error occurs okay? therefore some few codes uh, what we are following in the engineering fields i have given here such as the asme code indian boiler regulations regulations indian standard 2825 british standard 1515 tem standards for heat exchangers american petroleum institute code api american petroleum institute code i api api 162 indian standard code 15 803 and at the last japan industrial standard so these are the various standards and codes we are following to make the fabrication of the boiler top components the material used to fabricate this components are comprised of maybe any materials we can use which are which are to be uh, required by the customer importantly we use the corrosion resistance material uh, like cast stainless steel and sometimes we use uh, a low carbon also the low alloy steels a terrific stainless steels a nickel based alloy see all are become um, all all these components and alloy system belongs to corrosion resistance material see it is given copper nickel alloys titanium alloys and admiralty brass etc So this all one, one to one related to the corrosion resistance components, corrosion resistance material. Because in the boiler plants, uh, definitely high temperature will reduce 
and definitely it is subject to the corrosion therefore we are planning like corrosion resistant materials commonly used process of welding are tig and mix so these are the two importantly even though uh, smaw also we will use uh, shielded metal arc welding maybe the tungsten inert gas welding or otherwise a metal inert gas welding mix process are frequently and mostly used in fabrication of these uh, pressure vessels and boiler components NDT methods ensures the acceptability of a butt and fillet weld. We know butt weld is nothing but a connection of two components. At the same time, fillet weld looks like some of a, a T joint. So, likewise, the corner joints. So, so this is fillet. Uh, we can understand. So, uh, so, this is fillet. So, when we are doing the corner, it is fillet. When we are doing the two welding process, so this is the two specimens when you are doing welding here it become the wet joint <clears throat> see the satisfactory root penetrations proper fusion of the fillet welds for a joint efficiency Freedom from unacceptable cavities, freedom from the porosity, freedom from the intrusions, freedom from the cracks and freedom from the various mechanical damages. This all freedoms we will get only when we are doing a proper NDT methods. When we are doing this exercise of NDT testing to find the defects, then we can be free from the defects. So first we, to, we should find, then we should repair and then it will become free. Otherwise, we should avoid fabrication of pressure vessels. See, I have taken first one of fabrication of pressure vessel. ND is required to examine and evaluate a lot of things in the pressure vessels, like maybe the longitudinal welds. Usually, you could have seen the uh, pressure vessels will be a round bar pipe like structure, a big, large one. We have seen. We have the I have the image in the next slide also. I will show you. So such was a longitudinal uh, joints or maybe the circular joint of the pressure vessel, long uh, um, vessels or maybe the nozzle wells where we are connecting those uh, a manhole or a pipe opening or drain openings may be there. So for all these things, we may use all these methods. Importantly, the radiography or maybe the mantic particles or liquid penetrant, uh, any methods we may use uh, to do this uh, inspection of this uh, pipelines or otherwise this uh, pressure vessels. The test techniques and acceptable standards are prepared and documented based on the mutual agreement between the manufacturer and the user. See, we should be one, one thing we should be clear customer is the first priority how far they are going to use whether they are using the thin sheet or thicker sheet otherwise what their requirement uh, how much uh, maximum temperature it will be they are going to use they only know because in service uh, how far they are going to implement at what temperature uh, the preservation is going to run the user only knows those things. Accordingly, they give on specifications. So this many thickness is enough for me. This many layers of welded joints are enough for me. So this constructions of dimensions and holes, cavities, this, this many number of nozzles, this many number of drains to be there at this specific locations because they have to install at one point. The insertion point we don't know. So the user who is taking over those components or pressure vessels and their where they are going to install, they only know those things. Accordingly, they give some designs, they give some specifications. So our techniques and acceptable standards are preferred. So based upon this requirement, standards and techniques, what we are planning is preferred based upon their requirement. So there is a mutual agreement between who fabricate, who manufacture and then who uses those things. 
the documents are prepared based upon universally accepted codes standards and the specifications so this three we are plan, based upon this three we are can able to plan this techniques and standards are done maybe the documents next i'm going to heat exchangers all our heat involved reservations or heat exchanger whatever we are taking all our temperature involved all subjected to the uh, uh, a lot of heats the heat exchanger for form vital component in a large number of process plants these are examined during fabrication during fabrication to control the process of fabrication and during usage it means in service to prevent failure and initiate the replacement so replacement is a last chance the repairing is the first chance because repairing uh, is the specific only out of 100 meter or 50 meter or any number of large length of pipe repairing is easy but removal cutting and uh, replacing is very difficult uh, lengthy pipe is again wasted it means cost us uh, cost are wasted so we have to prevent failure first if not then repair then if not then only we should go for replacement so usually the following techniques are used to examine the tubes so preservation heat exchanger and tubes we are now maybe the decurrent ultrasonic helium leak testing or visual examinations any anything we can able to do and to identify the defect and to rectify also number 1 i have taken from that there is nothing but a, a eddy current uh, on the preservations a bobbin type eddy current probes are inserted into the tube through a probe drive system then we have a tube now and eddy current probe like a probe like structure is a sent went inside and forms the eddy current so depend upon the primary and secondary fields it is a eddy current sir generated that we know so sir uh, we can able to do so see the multi frequency test modes are used to detect maybe the local corrosion or erosion or cracks or any possibilities of local locate the foreign materials the dust particles or anything else which are which are present there are detected tube of magnetic materials are tested by eddy current using a saturation techniques number 2 ultrasonic testing of previously we have seen you see previously we have seen about the eddy current now we are talking about this ultrasonic testing and preservations all are related to the nuclear non nuclear and chemical industries ultrasonic rotary inspection using a pulse echo mode a pulse echo mode is used to examine the circumference of the tube wall thickness or tube wall weld joints a tube wall thickness is assessed by this uh, technique so uh, by using this pulse echo technique we can able to understand the thickness of the tube ultrasonic p scan technique is used to examine a tube to sheet welds see the weld comes the method is used to detect the lack of fusion the weld means it's obviously the lack of fusion or uh, maybe the porous or maybe the inclusions are possible to find by using this uh, ultrasonic sub surface defect finding method next one you see it is a helium leak test helium leak test is used to detect a leak of the entire heat exchanger sometimes due to lot of heat there may it, it, it a chance of breakage of micro hole formation may be there we could have observed in our home also any vessels which is uh, heated slightly one point will be getting holes or maybe blow holes so, so there, there are such chances are there uh, due to large number of heat and uh, the, therefore what we have to do uh, we have to find those leaks we, by naked eye it is not possible so we are filling water or uh, leak proof uh, 
a component setup and uh, we are giving a high pressurized water there so uh, somewhat water testing or leak proof testing we can able to do for a single tube and uh, is sensitive to all type of leaks at last the fourth one visual examination of the pressure vessels so maybe the eddy current maybe the ultrasonic maybe the leak testings maybe this uh, visual examinations the inner surface of the tube is assessed by visual examination with the help of cameras and video endoscope so we have a pipe a large pressure vessel tube and pipes are connected and we are started to weld we have to close those vessels now so at the time the inner surface uh, uh, without a man, manhole uh, we can't able to go inside man has to go inside to inspect and the manhole also it should be very large if it is uh, smaller it is not possible to move in, move in therefore we are planning to send a visual inspection through a prototype of any camera setup we have selfie stick we have done a ca selfie camera uh, day to day in this uh, day to day life we are using that's in the similar pattern as stick with the camera we can send our wire with the camera or a video endoscopes we can able to send inside and we can do this uh, uh, capturing of uh, uh, images and we can visually through the laptops or uh, uh, systems we can examine and we can judge what is happening inside the camera endoscope is inserted into the tube and examination is performed after the camera endoscope is withdrawn and it is recorded in the uh, system simultaneously for visual inspection not only this camera but we can do visually by seeing and by applying the penetrant uh, liquid penetrant over the material a contrast metals so this contrast measures also will be helpful to find our uh, inspection part of this continuity these plans requires the applications of NDT for both creative as well as preventive maintenance. Curative is nothing but curing, repairing. And one more word we have used here, one is curing and one is preventive. Curing is a word which is useful, we can understand when the error comes, we rectify through the repairing treatment. Preventive, we are stopping of coming of the error by adjusting those things in the paper document of design part itself. So those things are very easy to do in this entity methods. Curative maintenance is carried out by detection of the existing defects and to progress the component degradation. The data generated at this stage helps uh, one to decide whether the we have to initiate the repair or otherwise we have to initiate the replacement or otherwise uh, we have to leave as it is uh, because it may be a scrap. No need to replace the specific or no need to repair the specific point because it uh, may be uh, it is fully corroded. Specimen we can't able to do anything. It is as it is we leave or we, we like a scrap. The preventive maintenance is uh, carried out during the shutdown of these facilities. Keeping in mind of these requirements of code, standards and specifications, the conventional NDT methods also planned accordingly. See, for this case, a brief uh, uh, defects are introduced. Uh, uh, a brief idea of the defects are analyzed in another coming slide. As well, it's a textbook uh, pay copy we see now here. See, a pressure vessel and boilers may be in this uh, component is not, we are, we are classified into three categories. See the components, defects and commonly used entity method. What method we are using to find these defects? So in the pressure vessels, First one, the pressure vessels and boiler pans, there is a chance of uh, defects like named as a lack of uh, penetrations, lack of uh, fusions, cavities, cracks, porosities, corrosions, pittings, all these things. So, embitterments, stress corrosions, thermal fatigue. So, all these things can be determined by some various methods. 
So here, um, subsurface methods of radiography, ultrasonic is the surface inspections like um, magnetic particle inspection, liquid and visual inspections are there. So a lot of chances are there we can able to do similarly for uh, heat exchangers, general corrosions, uh, fittings uh, and stress corrosions or mechanical damage are occurs. So um, definitely we are using eddy currents, ultrasonics, maybe P scan, helium leak testings. Right? Otherwise, uh, something uh, aflux leakage test also we are using. See, the third one, see the third one, uh, storage tanks or ground underwater buildings, all these things are there. So, uh, similarly here also defects are corrosions only. So, we are using again the radiography, ultrasonic, visual, magnetic particles or maybe the video cameras uh, capturing, all these things we are trying to do. So some examples I have taken this from the textbooks. So we are now we are coming to the various uh, images of these uh, nuclear pressure vessel plants. You see, we have we want to know first what are the various uh, components available uh, in the uh, pressure vessel. So here I have noted down a manhole through that where the man will go inside to do inspection. See how, how large the tank is there, the shell is there, but how small the manhole is there. The name is manhole, man have to go inside. We are giving a way to go inside of the man to maybe a labor to clean or maybe the engineer inspector to inspect for the in-service defects. But in during fabrication, so newly we have to do these things. Here, I am pointing you to various uh, names of the preservation. Maybe it is named as a horizontal preservation, a man way. Maybe the various types of uh, uh, nozzles are there to take out uh, the various for various processes. Uh, here, when we have uh, some nozzles, and uh, see, we have done a welding process uh, over the specimen here. You see, this is the longitudinal weld. You see, the full lengthy longitudinal weld we have did. And see here, the you see here. This uh, circumferential weld also available. See this one. On the dish head, dish end. So this is done separately. This longitudinal weld done set separately and dish ends. Like a cap. So like a cap we are closing both uh, pressure vessel, both um, ends. So this, this is circumferential weld we have to do and longitudinal joints also we have to do. If joints are there, definitely heat. Definitely heat leads to discontinuity, some cracks, problems. So we are we want to settle down somewhere in the stand called as a saddle and then the entire thing where we are doing long tunnel building is called as a, a shell. So here itself we will have multiple connections, uh, multiple joints will be there to protect these things. So entire specimen are not possible. So this is maybe the one, this is maybe the one, this is maybe the one. So each one is are connected and uh, then we are uh, closing through the dish end and we are doing. This is an example of a, a vertical preservation. So the same what we have seen in the previous image. So here is the inlet of manhole. Uh, two manholes are provided here. Some nozzles, uh, dish heads. Uh, see at the bottom draining nozzles. Uh, nozzle outlets are saddled for the holding the preservations. Um, according to their um, manufacturers or according to the customer requirement, we are having some other um, other nozzles uh, wherever we need, we can be able to take an extent. See, uh, the this is these are the actual images. Uh, I I would like to uh, show you here. May this may be the head. See how large it is. Head. Some nozzles, what we have seen in the previous image only, the, the, the things only I am showing as a parts and the shell at the center one, see how large it is. We, 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 we have to stand here and do inspection. Right? And the, the skit and the uh, vertical column. Right? These are the various uh, parts of uh, preservations. Some other things of uh, reinforced. Uh, PRD manholes, see manhole, this was a large and the shuttles, it means nothing but a stand. See, 
I like to show you here a small uh, clip. A defective baby in the this one, the left side image is a butt, right? And uh, this one is the fillet. So this is the fillet. So on these things, we can able to do ultrasonic radiography, ultrasonic radiography, magnetic particle and uh, liquid penetrant testings are done. So what are the defects are there? So maybe the crack or uh, clustered porosity or toe crack or subsurface uh, laminations are available here. Maybe similar patterns we have in the fillet genre also. So I have done a, one video previously. Um, I will give some descriptions also there. Uh, that is regarding uh, types of defects in weld joints and its remedies. Types of defects in casting and its remedies. Both are very important. This, are, this page belongs to defect which happening maybe in the pipelines, which may happen in the pressure vessel parts, which may happen in the aerospace, which may, wherever the joint is, which may happen in the railways also, wherever the joint is there, there weld occurs. Then we have to study about the types of defects available in welding. So that I have, uh, you please go through my previous video. I will give the descriptions also there. So some of the various uh, gadgets we know, uh, tools uh, by which we are we can do inspection. So this is nothing but a fillet, uh, a weld fillet gauge to measure the fillet height or length, thickness. So those things we have a, a weld gauge. To measure the undercut uh, height, uh, undercut depth, right? Uh, so height of the weld reinforcement. Those things we are using some uh, panels, so using some tools or equipment to do the inspection. So these are the. This is how we do. See, this is how we are doing some various joint. And this is a shell head. See, here one joint we have did. It is not possible to. As we have seen in the previous original image. It, it's not like that we can able to do a complete pipe in a single stitch, not possible. So we have to do multiple plate joining. So here one join, one, this is one shell. So multiple connections are there. See, all are not straight. All are in different uh, heights and dimensions. One, 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 one over the other are perpendicular and some diamond, some gaps are uh, made as because if one crack is initiated, it should not propagate the entire full stretch of the specimen. So somewhere it should stop. Therefore, we are using a, both the combined longitudinal and uh, longitudinal and circumferential. So circumferential joint and longitudinal joint, both combinedly we are trying to do to avoid such a stress concentrations. So these are the, some of the photos I would like to show you here. Uh, how this. Uh, uh, weld connections uh, make some difficulties or errors or discontinuity damages in the plant. So the external piping restraints the cause surface cracking inside the vessel. So this is how the error. See how this uh, cracking is generally characterized by appearing as stretch marks. So these are some uh, stretch marks are there. You can see. We have to do inspection. Here it is done by liquid penetrant inspection. Some antique particles we can do. Any methods, surface cracks. So this is one of the weld gauge, which is, a, which is used to do undercut reinforcement height. Undercut heights we can do with respect to this weld gauge. Very important uh, uh, tool uh, for welding engineer or maybe the welding inspector. I have one of these at home. See. Some of the defects you see, uh, stretch marks are there. We are doing some various treatment on the pipes and uh, boiler uh, uh, plants, maybe the pressure vessels. Some examples I have taken here. See the list first one the ultrasonic testings can be done. The large uh, pressure vessels, pipes they are doing, a component is used there, ultrasonic testing through the probe methods they are doing there. Then, see the penetrant testing, liquid penetrant testing. We are using a spray, a emulsifier, or cleaner, or dryer, a developer we have applied. And then through the UV lights or normal visible light, we can able to do inspections. And the last third image, you see some uh, cracks are visible here. 
The third one, visual testing. See, we are using a weld gauge to height measurement, weld reinforcement height. So this is a flat pipe. We have done a welding here. We are doing a, a welding here. And then we are missing a fillet weld joints and maybe the undercuts or maybe unfilled groove are there. So this all these things we, have, we can able to find by a visual direct visibly we can see and find. Some of the images here for uh, uh, pitch catch techniques for the ultrasonics and with uh, pulse echo techniques uh, through the we are keeping the probe over the object and leaving uh, uh, through transmission techniques maybe this uh, uh, AD current inspection, you see. So, this uh, AD current inspection techniques are there. So we are using some AD current setup um, to identify the errors and rectify. So, here in the center part, center image, you see center one, they are doing some magnetic particle testing. So, they are um, having a a uh, yoke in hand and keeping a uh, magnetic fields are generated and we can able to identify those errors or discontinuities and we can able to manage. So this is how the radiography setup uh, maybe the gamma rays or x rays are uh, useful to find the subsurface uh, cracks. Some of the data of the um, plant so here we are using some uh, material, what material we are using, uh, general discussions I am doing in the pipelines, what material, uh, nuclear materials, uh, uh, pressure vessels are used. So for a shell and head we are using SA516 grade 70, maybe the part number 101213 and the shell thickness maybe the 14 mm thickness, Head uh, for head we are using a 18 mm thickness, you see how large it is, 18 mm thickness. 18 mm, 10 mm is got 1 centimeter, two, nearly 2 centimeter thickness we are using for head to go, to cover all this uh, heavy high temperature uh, uh, pressure vessels. Uh, similarly for skid place we are using IS2062 grade B, nozzle 1 flange pipes and nozzle 2 flange pipe, nozzle 3 flange pipes. So SA105, SA106 grade B or uh, we are using the various materials and various uh, grade thickness. Uh, these are the specifications uh, given by the customer. Based upon this, we are uh, taking the design and we are doing the weld map, where we have to do which weld, what heat input involved there. This is 18 mm, this is 14 mm, this is very thin sheet. So when thin sheet, we can't able to give much more uh, heat, not possible. So definitely blow holes or uh, melting of the materials also may happen, blow holes. So that is all we should avoid. So at the time for so thin, thick, thin thickness material, what type of welding we should do? Thick welding, we can try. Likewise, we should plan the welding map and we should do the process. So some of the welder qualifications I have given here. So some, some examples I have taken, name of the welders, welding process, what type of welding process he made, uh, under stamp some examples, a 2 inch schedule 80 and then the pipe outer diameter thickness 558 and 5.5 and weld positions he welded as 6G. 6 means all, all positions from 1G to uh, over around positions, inclined positions of 6G. The welder is qualified and he can weld. So method backing F number 6 uh, filter wire. So some images I want to show you here, you see. They are doing some uh, inspections of using ultrasonic inspections. So here they are doing some Autosonic scanning machine used to find the forging material on the forging material. So this is how you see the how long uh, pressure vessels boilers are made and how many manholes are there. We have manholes here, we have manholes here, 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 and then various parts of vessels uh, uh, nozzles are there and uh, to climb and some other parts of according to the customer requirement they have designed. So here the saddle to settle down. See at the bottom we have. That is not a part of the boiler. Uh, during fabrications uh, we can't able to settle down on the floor. So we are just like that we are keeping above like a stand. And then we are doing. So see the head. 
we have a head we have we have to do welding here around welding we have to go inside maybe through the manhole and we have to do inspection throughout it's a very a difficult wet process for welding engineer i have did this see so how they are showing here uh, various green line shows the joint connections here we have joint here we have joint so some of the fillet weld patches so repairing work they are doing on the connections so some some weldings of mig or any other uh, weldings we can do here uh, they are welding the head with the shell you see here this is the weld welding head they are doing so here they are doing see they are doing welding here because empty gap is there empty gap is there we are, uh, we are doing this empty gap is see uh, after fit up uh, we are having the gap they have to do welding so some of the other uh, uh, part skirt here they are welding so now the uh, self imposed nozzles we have seen the previous image uh, nozzles are kept over the uh, nozzles are these are things nozzles the nozzles are kept over the um, pressure washer outlet that we have shown here some of the plants in in service plant this is previously image what we have seen is belong to fabricated zone this is now it is started to work it started to corrode it started to um, receive the temperatures there definitely some damages uh, may happen may not happen so we have to be very careful so it is uh, one of the broken part when we are doing a hydro test uh, we are pressurizing leak for public test we are doing and high pressurized water fluids are kept inside and still we are pressurizing therefore this uh, weld joint where we have made a now opening it is not uh, not uh, sustainable it, it creates a crack and comes out so it means uh, there is a welding defect we have to we have to find this the defect can be find using a ndt method but we have not done properly therefore it uh, this creates a lot of problem huh? like uh, difficulties so some of the acoustic emission testing process uh, they are doing on the field some the radiography testings somehow it is uh, or uh, this uh, ultrasonic testing they are doing on the weld sample you see they are using a weld sample here so this is the thickness of reinforcement and we are finding uh, uh, we are having a probe in hand and a setup of ultrasonic and we can slowly we can move the probe and you can find so whatever it is this is a sample we have in hand but the same sample only it is uh, converted into the boiler plant converted uh, into the uh, bended and converted into the pressure vessel shell part in this uh, pressure vessel part uh, see um, heads and pipes are connected here the joint you see here the joint here the joint is there so and uh, all connected and we are do, uh, trying to do we are trying to do this uh, inspection to find uh, whether uh, because we, why we are not doing here these all these things are not, these all zones are non cutted zones a uh, entire plate has been bended at, at the other end side only one joint will be there a uh, long tunnel joint so here this uh, two heads are connected on the shell and center part also one connected so this is one pipe see uh, this one is one pipe and this one is one more pipe we have connected two here we have connected this two here and connected with the head so this is how we have done the um, prepared the weld joints on the pressure vessels so we have to do this inspection maybe the mantic particle surface cracks or maybe the radiographic subsurface cracks can be done maybe the liquid printer testing also so it is a repair work see i told you repair is much more easier to do so that is what i have i have i have also pointing out here so this is the repair here we have already identified some difficulties in uh, discontinuities therefore we have done a repair removed those old uh, defective discontinuity part to weld joints and we have done uh, repairing cladding some cladding treatments we have done or maybe the joining treatments are done on the power plants some somehow some photos uh, showing a uh, amantic yoke magnetic particle inspections so these are the various uh, uh, points we have covered up to now up to now we have seen this uh, various applications of ndt in this uh, boiler pans are nuclear non nuclear 
and the chemical industries are mainly importantly preservations. So all techniques may be the visual, may be the liquid penetrant testings, may be the radiography, may be magnetic particles, may be the ultrasonic, any methods we can use to make adjustments or find the discontinuities and to prevent the further failures. So that is how NDT is much more important. The remaining part of the subjects, we'll see you in the next session. Thank you. Maybe in the next sessions we can continue about uh, aircraft, uh, aerospace, maybe the aircraft aerospace in the industry, application of NDT in the aircraft and the aerospace industries. The remaining part of the subject we will see you in the next session. Thank you.